More Spokane Public School employees are learning they may not have a job next year, and one school in our region is learning they may lose more than just teachers and staff. Heartbreaking to know that you know something you want is so hard to obtain. She dreamed of becoming a mom her whole life. When a diagnosis threatened to take that away, her twin sister stepped in in a big way. Saw some cloud cover today, but I'm still tracking warmer weather and more sunshine. It's all on your seven day forecast next. We are tracking some breaking news in the Spokane Public Schools layoffs tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Handerhan. And I'm Jane McCarthy. Just in the last 15 minutes, CREM2 News has learned the total number of planned layoffs has dropped in Spokane Public Schools. The new number of layoffs now sits at 255 for the upcoming school year. The original number had 70 more people potentially losing their jobs. We're working on sorting out why the number dropped today. We'll have more on that on CREM2 News at six o'clock. But again, if you're just joining us, that new total number of employees expected to be laid off at Spokane Public Schools has now dropped to 255. Amid the layoffs this week, parents and staff at one Spokane Public School could lose more than just teachers and staff. Eagle Peak School in the Spokane Valley serves students who may have behavioral problems. The school isn't going away, but could become an entirely new school in the fall. Cram 2's Tim Pham went to find out what those changes are. If the school changes its name, it wouldn't be the first time. You may remember before 2014, it was known as the Bancroft School. We are inching closer to summer vacation. Come next school year, changes are coming to Eagle Peak School at the Pratt Building. Students at this school need extra care and support. They were already placed in a BI room at another school and it didn't work out for them. Or they were struggling in their main school um, with a lot of behaviors. It's an alternative school for students who may have behavioral problems. Danielle Anderson is a parent that formed the Eagle Peak Community Group. She wants to look for ways to support a school that doesn't have the best reputation. A lot of people call it the most treacherous school in the entire district, and that's sad. This week, parents received a voicemail letting them know changes are coming to the school, but it didn't say much more. Educating parents on what's going to happen next year. Um, it was a very vague message, not very descriptive. The news comes amid a large district wide layoff. Anderson was concerned the specialized school could be closed, but this is not the case. Brian Coddington, a spokesperson for Spokane Public Schools, says they are working on plans to enhance programming to provide more individualized options for students. It might not be the only change. A staff member at the school tells CREM2 there are plans to create a new school with a new name in the Pratt Building and possibly opening it up to students of all needs. That's nice that we want to change the name, but if they don't have the resources and supports that us parents need, What's the point of just changing a name? We asked the district about these plans. Coddington tells us he cannot comment on the specifics, and there's much more to the changes that parents will learn about later this month. We are not sure what the new name of the school will be, but we could find out at one of the district's upcoming meetings regarding the school's future. Reporting in Spokane, I'm Tim Pham, CREM2 News. In other news, the actor behind the original Chewbacca has died. Peter Mayhew's family said in a statement that he passed away at his home on Tuesday night. They also said, quote, the Star Wars family meant so much more to him than a role in a film, unquote. A memorial service is planned for June. For more than 30 years, the Bloomsday Runner statues in Riverfront Park have inspired runners not only during the big race, but all year round. Yeah, the artist behind the joy of running together modeled each runner after an actual person. Creme Tees Alexa Block caught up with two of the runners who are featured. They capture the spirit and the heart of Bloom's Day. The joy of running together figures have been in the riverfront park for more than three decades. Each face is one that belonged to the Spokane community. But the most familiar one is the front runner, Bloomsday race director and founder Don Cardong. In the 1980s, the artist behind the sculpture, David Govader, went to Cardong with an idea to make a sculpture of him for Bloomsday. I said, well, if you're going to do a Bloomsday sculpture, it better have more than one person in it. 
Govader made 40 figures, which included Cardong. He admits he wasn't too thrilled about it at first. I didn't know if being you know, the lead uh, runner in that sculpture was something I really wanted, <laughs> but uh, it's turned out to be fine over, over time. Kim Coons was also a model for the art piece. This is her next to her statue. She lives on the west side now, but she has still managed to run in 37 Bloomsday races. It's wonderful, you know, and that's why it's called the joy of running together, because it's all about the group, the whole group. Every time she comes to Spokane, she visits the sculptures and reflects on what they represent. But the best part is what a great, great event Bloom's Day is, year after year. Coons will miss out on this year's race, but promises to be back next year. As for Cardong, he is set to retire as race director, but he'll continue to run the race for as long as he can and continue to be inspired by these runners. I plan to kind of enjoy Bloomsday and also certainly the sculptures uh, for as long as I'm around. So. Alexa Block, Creme 2 News. Very cool. Yeah, I didn't know they were modeled after actual people. So that's yeah, I actually, fact. I met one person who's somewhere in the pack there yeah. at one point. And what a cool, a cool tribute, thing. right? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, you can also pick up your race packet and your runner number at the Bloomsday Trade Show tomorrow and Saturday as well. It's happening at the Spokane Convention Center. The times for each day are listed right there on your screen. You can also see the latest in running gear there as well. And if you want to register for the race, it's not too late to do that either. You can do that at the trade show as well. Late entry fee, though, is $40. Also, the weather for the oh, race looking gorgeous. Tom Sherry uh, sharing the good news, right, Tom? Yeah, I loved seeing that piece. And Don Cardon, thank you, thank <laughs> you, thank you. What a treasure for the Spokane area. Man, oh, man. Uh, love this race. Love that whole get-together. And that whole piece kind of caught the whole feeling. It's just that whole community coming together. All right, weather-wise, a few showers in northeastern Washington and northern Idaho. Uh, not so much across Washington State, although we have plenty of cloud cover. As you can see, that live picture downtown. 57 degrees right now. Barometric pressure is steady, but the wind is blowing. Uh, this is recorded out at Spokane International Airport out of the south-southwest at 17 miles an hour. We'll look for decreasing cloud Clouds overnight, a low of 39 degrees. Should see some sunshine to start your Friday. Then we'll become partly cloudy in the afternoon with a high of 66 and partly cloudy skies for the weekend, but nice and mild. 69 on Saturday and 71 degrees for the last uh, Don Cardon Bloomsday, at least the ones that he's in charge of. But uh, as he has said before, he's going to keep running in them. But man, oh man, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll see you downtown on Sunday. Well, for the last 15 years, music director Eckhart Proy stood as the familiar face conducting the Spokane Symphony. So this Sunday will be Proy's final concert in Spokane as he moves on to another symphony. I sat down with him a few days before his Spokane swan song and found a good natured guy with a profound love of music. There's a lot of levels that people don't realize what a, what a conductor does. So, so when, when uh, people try to imitate conductors, they try to be like Mickey Mouse, you know? It's like, and, and that's, not, that's not what we do. <laughs> You'll soon Wait, see. Wait, that's not what they yeah, do? Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 not even close. So join us for his thoughtful, in-depth interview tonight on Creme 2 News at 6. In other news, it appears another grizzly bear is on the move in North Idaho. The Idaho Department of Fish and Game shared this photo of grizzly tracks. They were taken in a remote area of Shoshone County. So they say this particular bear used to live in Montana, but now has clearly moved south. Grim 2's Taylor Vito has more on why game officials say this appears to be happening more often. OK, first off, so to be clear, this bear was found really deep into the woods. Just to give you a sense, this road we're on right now going towards the Fernand Saddle, we'd have to stay on this for at least a couple more hours to get to where this bear was in the Coeur d'Alene National Forest. Still, regardless, Fish and Game says that whenever you're going into the woods, you really want to be bear aware because grizzlies can sometimes come this way. I just thought it was kind of cool to see such a, a nice clean set of tracks. It's not often they're that picturesque. Game officials knew this grizzly bear had been in North Idaho. It has a tracking collar on it. Still, wildlife experts call the site somewhat invigorating. It's kind of neat to see those tracks like that. Idaho Fish and Game says these tracks belong to a young male grizzly. It had previously been captured, collared, and then placed in Montana, north of Clark Fork. 
Since then, it's made its way through mountainous terrain to the McGee area in Shoshone County. We've seen them move back to where they came from. We've seen them move out and we've seen a number set up shop. There have been some recent instances of grizzlies on the move in North Idaho in recent years. In 2015, this grizzly was recorded in a backyard in the Silver Valley. Then last August, this bear was caught raiding chicken coops north of Athol. This most recent grizzly is well in the wild, though, just in an area they're not known to frequent. It's not common, but uh, it's not like we have an established population in the North Fork of the Coeur d'Alene. And Idaho Fish and Game says that over the last decade, it's become more common to see grizzlies on the move in this area. Grizzly populations in the Selkirk and Cabinet Yak ranges have increased over time. And we see more and more of those bears leaving those recovery zones. So the agency says hunters looking for black bears this spring should be mindful of this grizzly. Leave it be and please carry bear spray just in case. In North Idaho, Taylor Vido, Crim 2 News. I'm